Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about painting cold white. So when I say cold white, uh, I mean white that is in a more blue uh, tone. It has doesn't have the warm elements to it. Uh, cold white is traditionally a white you'd want to use if you have a character sitting in a frosty setting, in an overlit setting, uh, something wintry, right? It communicates this sort of cold starkness. It can also be a great way to contrast against certain colors, so using cold whites um, can be great if you have other warm elements on your miniature uh, because then they will really pop out uh, and it'll help the miniature still look clean and that's the thing about cold white cold white looks crisp it has all these nice adjectives for it it looks crisp and clean and all that sort of stuff so that's what we're going to do today um, and when you're painting white, that's usually the first decision you want to make is, are you going to use a warm white or a cold white? We'll do a separate video where we talk about warm white. Warm white's a, a much more known quantity. There's generally a lot larger range of paints supporting them. You know, things like uh, bone colors and ochre colors. These are warm whites. Okay. But today, we're going to talk about cold white. And... Cold white can be great, especially for, say, things like armor or flowing cloaks or stuff like that. Um, because in the end, you often want your armor to have a crisp appearance. If you've got, a, if you've got a, say, a Space Marine chapter that's in mostly white, you probably don't want it to be a warm white. Because it might look, it's going to make the, the, it look naturally more dirty. Um, because warm whites are infused with yellow and brown. So... Here we've got uh, our old blind auger from the uh, Sisters of Sigmar. And we're going to give her a nice white dress. Now, I'm not going to do the whole dress here on camera. We're going to focus on this back area back here. And this leads me to my first tip when painting white, which is don't paint white over black. I don't know why anyone paints over pure black anymore, but whatever. Um, if you're going to paint white, I would highly recommend, at minimum, doing a zenithal style like I have here, or just priming in white, okay, if, you, if you've got a large amount of the figure that's white. Um, now, I'm not a huge fan of priming in pure white, because then your all your shadows get filled with pure white. Um, so if you're going to paint in pure white, I would recommend giving it a good wash first of something like whatever your shadow color is going to be. Um, so I'll talk about my shadow color here in a moment, which in this case is a very dark blue. But if I was going to be a prime in pure white, I would wash the whole miniature in blue and then probably do a high dry brush in pure white. So if you don't have an airbrush can zenithal, but you can rattle can white, that can be a good way to still get at it and preserve your shadows. Okay, so the next thing you got to think about is what are my shadows in the white going to be? Because white shouldn't be pure white. Um, moreover, white shouldn't even be white almost at all except at the highest highlights. Um, your eye reads things as, as white that are not at all actually white. And so it's important to think, what are your color? Your, your, what is your shadow color? Almost anything will work. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a very deep blue because I want this to be cold um, all the way through. Um, at the same time, you could mix a little bit of red into the blue or use something purplish, and that'll give you a more neutral shadow if you have a little bit of red a little bit of blue it won't make it seem as uniformly cold you're adding a little bit of warmth into the shadows when you go that direction um what i would say is you want to use some kind of color don't just run black to white one of the biggest mistakes i see people make when they paint something in white is they only use a black to white spectrum the color white reflects everything but it doesn't reflect everything evenly so here's my, my napkin. This looks pretty white because it's in like a daylight white balanced bulb, right? But if I turn it kind of away, really look at all the tones that are there, okay? And moreover, look down here in the shadow and look at the interesting sort of colors that are there. Some of it because of what I wiped on here. Some of it just because of what it's picking up from the world around it, all right? The little hints of these other colors in the world. You want to make sure that that's reflected. Now, 
in this case, what we're going to do is I have, we're going to go for blue shadows. We're going to go for a very, very cold look here completely. So um, I'm using some Holdra blue from scale 75, some Miskatonic gray also from scale 75. And then of course, some war colors, just pure white. Um, my favorite white is like just dead white is war colors white because it is such a wonderful, crisp, clean white that doesn't go chalky. And that's the other big problem when you're working with white is that white likes to chalk. You can see I've got my paints here on my palette. And well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of this, this blue. Um, by the way, these three colors are not somehow magical or the perfect things. What you really need is a darker shade color with no white in it. That's the key. Don't pick something near. So for example, you might think, oh, well, I'm gonna use blue. So I'll pick something like a sky blue like this. No, the problem is this has a bunch of white in it already and is going to pollute and be very hard to thin and glaze. What we want is something darker. It seems ironic because we're painting white, but this color is pretty much pure blue. There's no white in here to, to create uh, a stronger reflection. As a result, we'll be able to thin it down into a very, very, very transparent glaze. And that's what we're gonna do first. So we're gonna take some of this blue I'm going to spread it out here on my palette, I'm just using water. Just move it around until I feel like I've got it where I want it. Test it on the back of the hand. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so we're just going to focus on the back part of her dress here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work that blue glaze down into my darker shadows. So bottom of her tush here and the sides and in the folds of the dress. We're just going to get that blue in there. We'll run a little bit right up here around the top. If I was really, you know, being careful, I'd make sure I had it all under here as well, but that's okay. Okay. Now with this first one, we've got to let it dry completely. This is going to be one of the last times for a little while we let something dry completely. But this glaze needs to be completely set and in place. And you can see how dark that is on the palette, but how light it came out on the miniature. Okay? And we're using the natural zenithal here to, to our advantage. Because in the end, this is a white dress. It shouldn't have hyper deep black shadows. Okay? You know, when white gets in its shadows, if we take this, let's go back to our napkin, and I like fold that over. There's no, there's no like pure black hiding down in here by my thumb. Right? It's just a, a shadowed white. Okay, so now that that's completely dry, here's what we're going to do. Over here on our palette, I'm going to take some of my, my gray. I'm going to mix that right here. I'm just going to grab a dab of the thin blue, work it in, so you can see I get that nice spectrum to it. Okay, then I'm going to take some of my white here, a nice big dab. I'm going to run it over here on this side into this color and then pull it throughout. Okay, pull it back. So now what I get is a nice range. And then what I'm gonna do is pull a little more gray up here, grab a little more of that blue, work that in just one more time all the way throughout, okay? I'm doing it this kind of an odd angle at the edge of my palette to make sure you can see it. Okay, the point being is that now we've got something pretty dark with this blue infusion. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, let's focus on this area in the center here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just very quickly run this over the higher areas. And this is sort of the mid-tone, right? It's not pure white, but look how your eye reads it as white almost immediately because of what it is. All right, now, while this is still nice and wet, I'm gonna go grab some more of my blue. And I'm just gonna start working it into the shadows there. Just kind of blending that together as it's wet. You can use some drying retarder if you want. Grab some of my gray, work it here. I'm gonna go into the edge of my pure white back here and then just start grabbing some edge areas. 
Again, all this paint is wet. We're just working it in. Go back into my mid-tone. Go back into my darkest color. And you'll see what I'm just slowly doing with all this wet paint. I'm keeping it nice and thin. This is very wet, but very thin paint. It's just slowly bringing this all together. Okay, so we just keep consistently wet blending it around. Avoid the brush a little there. Okay, now we're gonna let that rest a moment. <clears throat> you can't sit there and wet blend forever, right? Because what'll happen is you're going to eventually start pulling paint up as the lower layers dry. But you can see how we've got some nice blue tones under shading it there, but we've got the whiter areas on top. So we're going to let that set and dry completely. Our goal here is to, through a couple uh, is, to, is to make sure that we've got a couple nice tones trapped in this white. And what I mean by that is the white being a very highly reflective color, white, pure white by itself actually reflects every color in the spectrum equally. But of course, the problem is, is that it's very rare in nature to encounter a perfect white. That is to say something that literally reflects every part of the spectrum equally because of ambient light being more tilted one direction. That is to say you're in bright yellow light or bright blue light or because the nature of whatever the color is isn't perfectly that you get these inconsistencies. So there we go. Now we've got it nice and dry. And you can see how we've got these nice colder tones reflected. All right. So again, we can sort of repeat it down here on this part. So I can just bring in my mid-tone. And then go with some of my darker... Go straight into my pure blue. A little too. There we go. Okay. These are some heavy shadows down here in this corner. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to make sure that they're well captured. And we go back into the mid. Okay, we go get up into our nice near pure white, but still cold, still icy. And we're just wet blending them all right together, just working on the miniature, using the miniature as our palette. Now, I'm not worried about exactly where everything lands. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We can always clean up later. The important part is to get most of our values in place here. All right, we want to get the brightest spots, we want to get the darkest spots, kind of get things, you know, sketched out, understand exactly what it is. Like, I'm not using a super fine brush here. I'm not being careful. You can see I'm just, I'm just pushing paint around. And like I said, if you find uh, the Scale 75 and the War Colors are nice because being a gel medium, you have a very long drying time. If you're doing this with, say, a Citadel paint or a Vallejo paint or something like that, you're probably going to want to invest in a uh, a drying retarder of some kind, some kind of retardant medium that you mix with a little water in this uh, just to make sure you get it, just to make sure it stays active when you're doing this sort of thing. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got a nice, her dress is looking real nice. We've got our higher areas picked out. There we go. All right. But we still got our nice blue 
uh, nice blue shadows being cast. So again, we're going to let that dry completely. And then what I'm going to do while I'm waiting here is if I look at this and I say, oh, you know, that's maybe a little too blue. Okay. Well, let's get into more of our just gray and white here. We can always correct. If sometimes your shadow color is a little overwhelming, then all we do is we come in, we take some of our without our color because we only need a hint of that color. We don't need it to be overwhelming. We just come in. This is just a nice little gray-white mix. And I'm just kind of running it over my high spots where I want to catch stuff. And the important part is always to keep a lot of liquid in the brush. Or sorry, you keep very wet paint, but don't keep a huge amount of liquid in the brush. I was about to say the opposite of what I meant. <laughs> because you don't want anything near white to chalk on you. So, you know, the idea of thinning your paints, of having, uh, a, you know, a very watered white is very important, even in the case of this war colors, which is so resistant to it. Um, you know, white is a naturally chalky color. Now I'm just working in my pure white. And that's what I want to do. I want to keep working it back and forth and take my edges here. The very highest highlights. Those should be pure white on this. Everything else should be something not quite white. And there's lots of great colors and lots of great paint ranges for this. Um, you know, if you're working in Citadel or something like that, you've got things like Pallid Witch Flesh and Rackarth Flesh and things like that. There are all these wonderful, like, near gray whites that can be good for a purpose like this. I mean, if you're in Vallejo, you've got things like white gray um, and... Uh, silver, like silver gray, I think they have one. There's a bunch of different near whites they have in both cold and warm. So, you know, all, all of your paint ranges have something you can utilize for this. Okay, so again, we're just going to let that dry. You can see how what I do is I go in, I wet blend the area, and then I just let it dry. And I see how it all sits. Ooh. Because that's the other trick with white. It will always go on stronger pure white will always look stronger when it's wet when you put it on than when it dries it will naturally dull when it dries and you have to sort of be aware of that property so that that way you take into account like you might put on some white sometime and if you if you paint in white paint a lot you've probably had this experience where you've painted something and thought whoa that is way too bright what what happened and then it dries and you're like oh wait a minute that's totally different now how did that how did that all go down well, it's because your white paint tends to look very, very, very stark when it initially goes on. But then it will dry quite a different color. Okay. So there we go. We've got some, we got a real nice white dress going. So from this point, if I wanted to keep going, Really, the, the trick from here is to just smooth things out, right? So now, I, if I, depending on how much you care, like that is to say, if you're working stuff that's tabletop, I don't even know if you'd necessarily go this far. You might have stopped after the first time I did it. You know, if you've got to do 50 white pantaloons or something, I don't know. Uh, then you're probably good, okay? But if you really want to take it farther, then what you're going to do is you're going to progressively work in thinner and thinner and thinner versions of your paints to get it nice and smooth out there. So now here I have an extremely thin gray that I'm just kind of pushing. This is just my gray that I'm just kind of pushing around in my mid-tones, my middle areas to make sure it's nice and smooth. Do the same thing with a little bit of the uh, gray blue, my sort of icy shadow color here because this girl would be uh, sitting in a wintertime scene. And so I would want that blue feeling of just cold creeping in. Um, if you don't want it to be this cold, mix it in with a little, use a little more black. Like you can use a little more black in with your blue if you want some deeper shadows. That's fine too. It's, uh, it's your miniature. It's your world. It can be whatever color you want. So we're just working very thin just glazing in some colors, 
just making sure that those are trapped in there nicely, that we're capturing those little colors in the, the shadow reflections. And then I'm going to take some of the pure white, thin that down. Sorry, I'll show you over here on the palette. Just thin it down, get that gel medium working for me. There you go. See how that's flowing? You can see how thin I've got that. That's the other nice part about, like, say, war colors and scale 75 is that they don't gloss when you keep them that thin. They will stay very matte, which is also a nice feature. Um, if you're working, again, in something like Vallejo or, or Citadel and you go that thin, you're going to need to get some thinner medium or Lamia medium or something like that to, to get that thin without it going glossy because the pigment density just isn't high enough in those to, uh, to go that thin on water alone. Okay. And there we go. That's more or less my white dress. And so what I get now is I get something that looks uh, that looks very still white. Like it's still this absolutely reads as a white dress to the eye, right? But still has this wonderful touch of color in it. And when I put it onto a snowy base or in a cold environment, it's going to feel very much like it's part of that world it's living in. It's not going to feel separate or distinct, right? Um, if I did the same thing with red or purple shadows or warm whites, I could do the same thing. If it was on a, if it's sitting in a, you know, a field of daisies or a warm, on like a spring field of grass, I'd probably want some warm white because the yellow sun is out and there's browns and rich warm colors of nature all around. And so by using a warm white color, I would then place that figure into the nature it lives in, right? And it'll just, it'll, you probably don't even consciously notice it when you look at figs. But when this kind of stuff aligns, your brain is happy. Keep your brain happy. So there you go. That's cold white and how you paint it and get a nice, smooth, clean white. I hope you enjoy. Uh, I'll throw a photo up at the end of this so you can look at it more closely, as well as a couple other times I've used this technique for other similar white. Um, so you can see some different shade colors in the photo. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. And uh, share this with somebody if you know that they're planning an army that's going to largely use a lot of white in the paint scheme. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and greatly appreciated. But of course, as always, I thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.